So here is what I'm using. I'm using just a styrofoam piece and I'm going to begin to cut out some of the details. So when I paint over it, it will give it some really good texture. Now I'm using yellow paint, green paint, and blue paint for the books and some tone some shades of brown for the bookcase itself. Now, I made a mistake here in deciding I wanted to carve out the books a little bit more. I, that was a mistake, as you're going to see here, but it actually could create a better effect with better tools. So what I did right here is I used my X-Acto knife, and I began carving away at the books. And the reason I don't like doing this right now, in hindsight, is because it really creates an uneven surface on the inside. And so... I made that mistake. So if you're making a book bookcase, don't make that mistake. So I started using my X-Acto knife, and I didn't like the tool I was using, so I actually switched X-Acto knives later on. Well, X-Acto knife blades, as you can see right here. And as I switched my blade, I, I was beginning to regret it already, but I, I, I decided to even it out a little bit more. And I'm sorry I'm out of the frame. Uh... And I keep apologizing for my camera, but, you know, my camera sucks. So I begin to shave out a little bit more, try and smooth it out a bit. I mean, if I was more patient, which I'm not, I would have smoothed it out even more. So I create some texture with this flat blade, which I think is going to turn out great. And I really press in, and I try not to chill out any more details. I want this to look like an aged bookshelf, but I don't want it dilapidated. So I create some indents. This will look really good once you paint it. And so I indent it some more, and I'm out of the frame again. Oh, love that. Yep, great. Can't, can't, yep, can you, thank you, thank you. So I really, I chip away at the edges also to create a round, more round surface. And then I indent it more and add some more details to the books. Now, if you really press hard with a pen, these details will actually come out once you do the wash. So I begin doing more details, and I begin, I want to start painting. At this point in the video, I should start painting. There we go. So I use some brown for the paint. I don't think it matters what type of brown. And I begin painting. Now, the painting is kind of difficult because I don't have the little levers, so you got to watch where you put your hands so you don't get any fingerprints on the final product. The paint I'm using, which is Reaper Bones paint, dries pretty easily quickly so i didn't have to worry that about that as much and i forgot to do a black primer first which is really should have done but you know you make mistakes and you learn from them so that's what we're doing so i begin to continue my painting and i'm painting and while we're painting i should tell you now that i'm on instagram go follow blood bear gaming on instagram and please like and subscribe and share this video. Then I realize this is not the most exciting build, but it actually can turn out pretty good, and I'm hoping it does. So at this point, I've finished all the sides, and I begin moving on to the top. And the top is done. So I begin doing the books. Well, actually, I have to finish one more bookshelf. But after, we're, after I do the bookshelf, I finish the book. The books now i try and spread out the colors so it looks like kind of a library and i want to do a kind of a light surface to give the books a little more aged look i spread out the colors i started with the green first it doesn't matter what color you start with and it really doesn't matter the order of the books i think it will look fine either way so I, then i moved on to yellow candle light yellow to be exact and i colored in some books yellow now, I should have gone in for a second layer afterwards, but then again, I'm lazy, and I should have, and that's a mistake. I added some blue books, maybe some tomes of understanding, or some sacred texts. And I finished up with some black in the background after doing some red books. Now, the inside was really hard, and I, I, I didn't like doing that, that, that huge indentation. But, you know, it is what it is. And so you work with your mistakes and maybe it turns out bad. And if it does, then you will learn from that. And the reason I'm making this is so you guys can learn with me. So you don't have to make these stupid mistakes I do. 
getting in there was really hard, but the wash should have covered it up. And the black paint creates basically the same effect if you just cover it up with the styrofoam, cover up the styrofoam with the black paint. And that's the first layer of paint. After the paint has dried, you want to do a black wash. And what a wash does, it gets inside all of the nooks and crannies with a really dark paint and brings out the detail in a way that you really couldn't with any other paint. This is essential for miniature painting and terrain painting. The formula I use for wash is one part black acrylic paint and 10 parts of water. Don't be scared when you apply the wash very liberally. The thin layer that you apply, or actually a thick layer that you apply, will actually dry up and still be able to see the color. But with all the details darkened, that is the effect you want to go for. You will have to create later on another layer of paint in the lighter areas, but it's definitely worth it and very much necessary for covering up paint mistakes or making your terrain 10 times better. There are other more complicated formulas for washes, but this is probably the most basic one if you're just starting miniature painting. You want to go in and you really want to soak it in liberally. And you, you don't have to worry that much about it drying. It will dry overnight. So after the wash has dried, then you want to go in. It, taking terrain usually just takes a few days. I actually filmed this video just as I was filming the gravestone video so I can get two birds with one stone. Already, you can see it's kind of dark in the books. I'm going to have to go over that again with some dry brush or some other paint. But with the wood, it's very essential. And, uh, oh, no, look, I made a mess. This is why you really need to have a mat down. But, you know, I'm lazy. That's one thing that's very, very common among dungeon masters is that we're pretty, we're pretty lazy guys. I mean, I mean, are, are you guys lazy DMs? No? Oh, it's just, it's, it's just me then. So I soak it in, and I really try to apply very liberally. And I'm not really worried about the whole thing coming black, because that's just not how it turns out. At this point, we're going to wait for it to dry. And then we're going to wait a f Oh, no, I forgot the back. All right, so here is a very good example of what I'm doing. I usually try and follow the grain of wood, or the quote, grain of wood. And already you could see it manifesting itself within the cracks and glossing over the surface. This creates the perfect wood texture. There are other ways to add more texture, like rubbing tinfoil on it or using a wire brush, but this is what I went for. So here's what it looks like with the wash applied. And you could see the books have really been toned down. Oop, oop. Oh, oh, okay. So you can see how the books have really been toned down, so we're going to go over it. And notice that the wash is still wet, so in the morning we're going to look at it and we're going to see it. On the back, you can really see the details taking shape in a way that could not have been seen with the paint. And I'm really excited to see what it looks like and see how this turns out. Will it fail? Will it succeed? Who knows? After letting it dry, I realized it didn't need as much dry brush as I thought. I still dry brushed it a bit, but it looked actually pretty good, and I wasn't dissatisfied with what I've done. So this is what it looks like, and yeah, there's stuff that needs to be fixed, and there's better techniques I could have used. But overall, for a beginner's build, I'm not sad. I'm pretty happy. As the party enters a mysterious room, they notice the only thing in here is a mysterious bookshelf, archaic and dilapidated. It stands tall. Surely archaic texts might live in these walls. I investigate the bookshelf, says the paladin, unwary of its origins. Don't do it, it, says the ranger, but the paladin does it anyway. Looking at the titles, he investigates. The ranger watches in disapproval. The paladin picks up a book. Looking at it, he notices a weird feeling, a light 
shines brighter than the sun. Looking around in confusion, the other two members of the party notice the ranger and the paladin have gone missing, all due to this mysterious bookshelf. What happens next?